Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are not now that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will, to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. You join me here back in the war room because of course it's raining like cats and dogs outside. Uh, typical, the two days I have allocated to shooting the review uh, and it's non-stop rain, so we're gonna do it old school style. Uh, and I had intended to go to the World War II and Vietnam War Memorial here in Philadelphia because we are of course talking about the Hamilton car key automatic. A watch that is intrinsically linked and inspired in its design by this, which is my wristwatch check. I'll also go into that in just a moment. But if you're not familiar with Hamilton, we'll do a quick recap of their history. But I have to say, it's a brand very important to the history of the channel. I think my first EDC video featured the Khaki King, now uh, synonymous with uh, Hugh Laurie, the British actor, comedian, musician all-round childhood hero uh, because he wore it in-house. So without further ado, let's recap the history of Hamilton. Hamilton was founded as far back as 1892 in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, not too far away from the city of Philadelphia. Like many watchmakers this old, originally it made clocks, then marine chronometers, consumer pocket watches, and perhaps what it was most successful venture uh, was a massive amount of railroad watches. In fact, it had a staggering 56% of the US market alone. The latter evolved into wristwatches as styles and technology naturally evolved. Its involvement with the US military by then had already been well established and more than 1 million watches were also sent overseas. The company was extremely successful in producing marine chronometers and deck watches in large amounts to fill the needs of the United States Navy as well as other allied navies too. Simultaneously, it conquered the civilian wristwatch market, especially in the interwar period, with endless Art Deco masterpieces, of which you can still find for an absolute steal on the used market. It was World War II and then the Korean War and finally the later Vietnam War that saw Hamilton reach its military production apex. During the booming 1950s, Hamilton by then was well into its golden age. Most notable is the charmingly distinctive asymmetrical and now legendary 1957 Ventura watch, being the choice of Elvis Presley. Not only was this timepiece untraditional, but it was also the world's first electric watch. This dalliance with celebrity would continue up until the present day, with Hamilton being featured in over 500 movies from Stanley Kubrick's landmark 2001 The Space Odyssey to the more recent Christopher Nolan Interstellar and countless more. And I picked these examples in particular because in both instances, Hamilton actually designed watches specially for these movies. But this was nothing new. The earliest cameo by Hamilton was on the wrist of none other than Marlene Dietrich in the 1932 film Shanghai Express. During the 60s, Hamilton innovated by acquiring the Swiss watchmaker Buren and developing one of the first micro-rotor-based automatics. This also saw the end of American manufacturing in Lancaster by switching to Switzerland and using the Buren factory. This then culminated with Hamilton being sold to SSIH, subsequently the watchmaking juggernaut Swatch Group in 1974. But before this final chapter of independence, a team at Hamilton Watch Lancaster, Pennsylvania developed the Pulsar, the world's first digital watch that incidentally even made it onto James Bond's wrist in Live and Let Die. So fast forward to today and Hamilton survives and thrives, unlike many lost to the quartz crisis of the 70s, dominating the entry to middle level Swiss made market. So now you're familiar with the story, let's uh, take a look at the watch itself, starting off with the dimensions and basic specifications. 
This is the reference H7045733, a prime example of just why Hamilton is so loved and prosperous. It is essentially a military field watch that has been refined into one of the best all-round watches money can buy under $500. In fact, I paid as little as $400 on Amazon Prime uh, and some of it was saved because obviously it comes on a strap and not the bracelet version. It's also worthy to note there is uh, different dial colors. So first of all, let's go over the dimensions. We have a diameter of 38 millimeters, a slenderness of 10.3 millimeters, extremely thin. Lug to lug, we're looking at 47 millimeters and a very strap compatible 20 millimeters lug width, a definite crowd pleaser undoubtedly. The weight is an extremely comfortable uh, 64 grams, and it wears actually more like a dress watch, to be honest, in keeping with its field watch roots uh, of being light, unobtrusive, and discreet. The case is constructed entirely of stainless steel. We have a very slightly domed sapphire glass, both on the front and on the back uh, for the display back. The watch uh, comes on this bolstered uh, leather matte strap with a kind of very slight grain texture and a contrasting white stitching to complement the uh, details of the dial. It is fastened by an entirely brushed and signed uh, traditional pin buckle. Now this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to bring in my little Vietnam era uh, Benrus. This is the mill spec. Uh, I've done a video on it already but I have to state that this is virtually indistinguishable from the uh, mill spec watches Hamilton also made um, during the same period. So essentially this is like the ancestor or as close as the ancestor of this as we're going to get. This is the sterile dial but essentially the numerals and layout is very very similar. Hamilton along with several other American uh, watch brands during that conflict was also contracted to make the now renowned field watch for mostly American GIs. However, unlike the parkerized finish of this, which was um, dictated by the military specifications, uh, deliberate because it's uh, designed so it doesn't reflect light and give away your position in uh, battle, obviously. This is the first in a series of notable refinements in order to bring uh, this former military watch into a more uh, versatile civilian form. You'll notice the bezel there is in a high polish and reminiscent uh, actually of the Rolex Explorer, if a little thinner. The size increase is the second big step up that really does modernize it. And interestingly, they have kept the syringe style hands, which are almost unchanged, except these are uh, steel, whereas these are completely painted white there. And also they've um, given a, a vivid kind of dash of crimson red to the arrow tip of the seconds there, which I think is actually quite a functional um, upgrade and also a rather charming touch as well. The glossy black dial is where most of the upgrades continue and it sets it very much apart from the pure utilitarianism of its ancestors. Here we see a stunning amount of detail with several concentric sections starting with the sunburst center circle in a glossy black containing the traditional 24 hour printed markings that is surrounded by a delicately guilloche track with uh, loomed Arabic numerals and a date window at the three o'clock. Then this is all ultimately framed by the outermost section that contains additional loom pips and an intricately and very precise printed uh, minute track, uh, again in white with a very sharp and crisp uh, contrast. It's worthy to note here that the arrow hand has been extended over its predecessor to give extra clarity when reading uh, the seconds there. The extra decoration of the dial does exactly what uh, it was intended to do and gives a lovable savoir-faire and extra flair, but in no way inhibiting the ruthless efficiency and legibility of uh, this watch. The dial, without a shadow of a doubt, is the best kind of evolutionary change from the battlefield to 
the office place. The addition of the date complication is also another feature that sets it apart from the deliberately simplified uh, military cousin and those who prefer a no date there is always the mechanical version. As part of the size increase, one thing that was boosted beyond the uh, general proportional growth is the crown you see there, and it is also signed as well. Um, Hamilton made it substantially larger, if you see, uh, and a worthy ergonomic improvement too. But most impressive of all is the fact that it's actually 100 meters water resistant without being a screw down. So hats off there. So if you turn the watch around, you will then see an expansive view of the movement via the final uh, departure from the strict form and function of its ancestors uh, with this display case back and it is a screw down as well. Powering this piece is the Hamilton Caliber H10, which is an interesting little story of innovation in itself. Hamilton's um, super conglomerate parent Swatch also owned the movement manufacturer ETA and so they took the ETA 2824-2 and modified it massively to create the impressive C07 triple one, which the H10 is actually based on. They cleverly lowered the frequency from 28,800 to 21,600, but this dramatically boosts the longevity of the movement with less friction on the moving parts and in turn uh, significantly increasing the power reserve to a remarkable 80 hours. As with the 25 joule ETA it's based on, we have a quick set date. And then of course, if we pull it out all the way, uh, it is, as you see there, hackable, and then push it all the way back, and we have manual wind in the first position. Hacking is probably the most important, as with its military progenitor, this was of course vitally crucial in a military context to coordinate operations. But for a civilian, it just makes synchronizing to a reference time that much a little bit easier. The monoblock bi-directional rotor is distinctly skeletonized with a H-shaped classic 60s Hamilton H logo and cutouts, a pleasing signature of individualization over its older non-modified H10. As you would expect from this entry level price range, there is no decoration uh, on the movement except for a little bit of standard pelage and uh, satin brushing. It is also unclear if the watch has been regulated, but I found this particular watch to perform admirably well with a healthy variation of only about plus seven, plus eight per day in accuracy. Being in the Swatch family, one could also even argue that this is uh, an in-house movement, but at the end of the day, what does it really matter? What's more imperative is that it's highly durable, dependable, affordable to maintain, easy to service, plentiful parts, and if really necessary, economical to even replace. So in conclusion, I'll start with the negatives. Well, they are so minor, to be honest, uh, there might as well not be any <laughs> negatives for this watch. Personally, I would have loved to see uh, the arrow hand completely painted with luminescence, uh, like you see on the, the uh, military one here. Of course, this is old tritium, so it doesn't work anymore, but uh, with the superluminova, you you get fantastic orientation, but I, I would love to see a, a loomed up seconds. Not the end of the world. Secondly, the strap is, well, a little bit boring, but um, compared to some of the, the cheap old straps supplied at the entry level, um, again, not much to complain about here. Quality is um, absolutely fine, although I have to admit, I wore this mostly on a NATO strap. One could criticize the display back, while it is a nice touch, especially if you're just getting into your first mechanical watch. Uh, for me, I, I feel it's a little unnecessary. It could have shaved off uh, a millimeter uh, and a half, really, um, without it. I don't find it that necessary to see the movement, but again, uh, we are in the realm of preference here. This is still very cuff friendly regardless. Now, if I had to add one thing I would really like added to the watch, and it's not necessarily something you can't do yourself or a watchmaker, is to uh, actually drill some uh, lug holes like the, the uh, Benrus here. I would have really liked that because of course it is an absolute strap monster. It would just have made 
the life a little bit easier. So, the positives, well, <laughs> unequivocally, uh, an overlooked home run from Hamilton. We have an almost faultless everyday automatic watch at this price range. It has the heritage, uh, any history buff uh, who values uh, such things in watches, uh, especially when they have such a strong link to the past, uh, it's skillfully present. It hasn't um, gone too far away from its roots, so to speak. Its design is yet contemporary enough to make it its own thing, but not abruptly different. The color scheme as well, mainly black and white with a little dash of red there, will make it compatible with just about anything. But ultimately, what makes this watch so compelling is its versatility. While the strict form and function of its mil-spec uh, inspiration certainly does limit it uh, to, to more casual and less formal situations. Um, whereas uh, this, I think, bridges the gap perfectly with its more elegant refinement and will work with pretty much any attire. The tweaked movement will also ensure uh, that if you have to wear it to work every day and then you take it off for something a little bit more sporty or fun, for the weekend, its massive power reserve will keep on ticking along and it will still be ready to go on Monday morning. Um, the 100 meter water resistance also means that we'll be able to handle swimming or most situations where water is involved. Tastefully executed, classic in aesthetic style, size and built for much more than uh, everyday endurance, this watch is pure class and its price punches way above its weight. The perfect Swiss made alternative to your more typical Japanese choice that uh, tends to dominate this price range. So I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below, uh, especially on this particular watch and any other Hamilton watches that are perhaps have tickled your fancy or you wish to see reviewed. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. I bid you farewell from the war room. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Now before I go guys, I just want to quickly tell you about this extremely cool app that Watchbox have launched. This is my own personal go-to app for everything watch related. Using the app, you can keep track of the real-time value of your watch collection. You can store watches in your digital watch box and even try on watches using an augmented reality. So don't miss out and please go to the App Store and download it today. You can access all of my latest videos right there in the app itself. And if you haven't already, please follow me on the official Urban Gentry Instagram and of course the Facebook UGWC. But most importantly of all, keep it positive onwards and upwards.